Hi, I'm Dr. John Park from Carolina Conceptions, and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about the IVF process here at Carolina Conceptions. When a patient is getting ready to do IVF, there's some time that's needed for preparation. That usually takes about two to three weeks to get everything set up to undergo treatment. And then the treatment itself can take approximately one month. Now during the preparation phase, there's a few things that the patient and maybe the patient's partner will have to do uh, in order to get ready for IVF. And one of the things that's very counterintuitive is that we have most of our patients take birth control pills. In one way, it can help um, prepare the patient to do IVF at a time that's convenient for them instead of basing it off of their own natural menstrual cycle. But Another reason why birth control pills can be helpful is that it may also help synchronize the eggs when we start stimulating the ovaries so that those eggs start developing at a similar time point. But during this preparation, we'll also want to make sure that the patient and if she has a partner, her partner has done uh, blood work. We'll want to make sure that the partner has done a semen analysis and we have something current on that and we'll also want to make sure that she's had some kind of uterine evaluation before we place an embryo into the uterus. And finally, the last step in the preparation is an appointment called an IVF class. The protocol that will be selected for a patient by the physician is going to depend on a number of variables. Uh, the age of the patient, her AMH level, her follicle count if she has one, her body mass index, and the goal of the patient. What is the patient's goal? So the protocol will be created by the physician and, and taught to the patient at the IVF class. And then they're ready to begin the IVF process. Now the IVF process can really be just broken down into two phases. The first phase is ovarian stimulation. The goal is to produce uh, multiple eggs. How many eggs depends on the patient's ability and what her goals are. Um, and then the second phase of IVF is in the embryology lab. One of the goals in the IVF process is to have the patient produce multiple eggs because one of the most inefficient parts of human reproduction is that the majority of eggs are not going to be capable of developing into a viable embryo. So if we can get a dozen or 15 eggs from a patient, that's like getting a year's worth of eggs at one time. And that's one of the reasons why IVF is so much more efficient than other forms of fertility treatment. So the first appointment in the IVF process uh, is, is at the beginning of the ovarian stimulation. We call that appointment the baseline evaluation. The patient will come in and have a pelvic ultrasound done. She'll also get blood drawn. On ultrasound, the expectation is that the ovaries will be quiet and inactive because she's been on birth control pills for two to three weeks, which suppresses the ovaries. And estrogen levels, therefore, should be low. So if that's true, the patient will then come off the birth control pills and she'll begin taking the injections to start stimulating her ovaries. So after the first series of injections, the patient will return for monitoring. We'll do another ultrasound and blood work. On ultrasound, we'll look at the ovaries. And for most patients, this equates to about 10 days of injections. And over that period of time, the patient will come in approximately four times for monitoring, if you include the baseline at the very beginning. So this is the ovarian stimulation process. And when it looks like the follicles and eggs should be ready, we'll instruct the patient to do a final injection at the end of the stimulation called a trigger injection and then she'll be in the office two mornings later for the egg retrieval procedure. So this procedure is done under conscious sedation anesthesia, and we have a procedure room that's connected to the IVF lab. And while asleep, we'll do another vaginal ultrasound, but we'll use a needle to go through the vagina then into the ovary and drain each follicle to collect the eggs. So as we're pulling the fluid out of the follicles, the eggs should be coming out with that fluid. We're collecting them in test tubes and handing them to the embryologist, where the embryologist then can immediately identify the eggs and set them aside. 
So to collect the eggs out of both ovaries, this is a procedure that should only take 10 to 15 minutes. The patient will wake up immediately and uh, she'll be ready to go home in about a half an hour. But before leaving, we'll be able to talk to the patient and let them know how many eggs we were able to collect. And if we're using a fresh sperm sample, we'll also have the sperm uh, available that morning. One of the things that the doctor will decide and part of the treatment plan is to decide whether to fertilize the eggs using conventional insemination or ICSI. Uh, conventional insemination is when you take the sperm, you wash it, and you put a certain concentration of good quality sperm with the eggs, and the sperm are fertilizing the eggs on their own within the petri dish. Uh, most of our patients are undergoing ICSI, and that's a, the micro insemination procedure where our embryologists are literally picking up individual sperm cells and then injecting them into the eggs to assist with fertilization. The insemination of the eggs happens on the same day as the egg retrieval. We culture those eggs overnight, and by the next morning, it's possible to tell which of those eggs have successfully fertilized and are going to be able to start developing into embryos. So we call the patient the next morning with that report. We're able to tell the patient how many eggs we got that were fully mature and available to undergo insemination, and how many of those eggs have successfully fertilized and are starting to develop into embryos. Now we'll culture those embryos for a minimum of five days to the blastocyst stage. And so after five days of embryo development, that's where we'll be able to do an assessment and inform the patient of how many embryos are, are developing. Uh, for some patients, they will be good candidates for undergoing a fresh embryo transfer. A fresh embryo transfer is when we select the highest quality embryo after five days of development and then place that embryo directly into the patient's uterine cavity. Once we place the embryo into the uterus, she'll be able to immediately get dressed and carry on with her day. Um, she'll be taking some supplemental progesterone at that point, but a pregnancy test is only a week and a half later. Now, some of our patients won't be good candidates for a fresh embryo transfer, and instead they'll plan on freezing all of their embryos. So for those patients, they won't need to take any additional medications after the egg retrieval. She'll just wait, let her ovaries go back to baseline, wait for her period, and then regroup with her physician to talk about doing a frozen transfer at some point in the future. Now, over the years, we've had a greater percentage of patients opting to do pre-implantation genetic testing on their embryos, or PGT. So pre-implantation genetic testing can be done to screen embryos for numeric chromosomal abnormalities. Because if present, we know that those embryos either won't work or are likely to result in miscarriage or could result in chromosomal abnormalities in a child, such as Down syndrome. So when we're doing PGT, a biopsy is done on an embryo. That means a small sample of the embryo is taken out. So approximately five cells out of the outer part of an embryo are removed. And then the embryo is immediately frozen and it stays here in the Carolina Conceptions Laboratory. But the cells that were removed will then get shipped out to a genetics lab. That analysis takes approximately two weeks. And as soon as we get the report, we'll call the patient and let them know how many chromosomally normal embryos they have. There's Two things that I want to focus on here. One is the injections or the medications. There is discomfort with the shots. There can be stinging, sometimes bruising of the skin, and some of the medications may cause a, a temporary burning sensation. The other side effect that's common with IVF are the side effects associated with, with having enlarged ovaries. So there's going to be some pelvic discomfort, some bloating, um, that's associated with having enlarged ovaries. It's temporary, and after the egg retrieval, the ovaries will go back down to their normal size somewhere between one and two weeks later. If a patient is stimulated more than we anticipated, she could experience another side effect called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. We have strategies to help mitigate those risks, and if a patient's at risk for that side effect, we would certainly communicate that with patient and talk about strategies to avoid that. Well, I know we covered a lot in this brief introduction to IVF, 
and there is actually a lot more to the IVF process that we haven't touched on. Not only will your physician be guiding you throughout the entire process, but our team of nurses, nurse practitioners, embryologists, medical assistants, they will be there to assist you with every step along the way.